Tarot Back Thursday. This week I um, am cleaning up a collection that I've used and loved. This is Cartabella's Spring Market. This is from 2018 and I've made lots and lots of projects. I just had little bits and bobs left up in the closet of shame and I thought I'm going to polish off this collection. So I actually ended up being able to make three projects with the pieces that were left. And um, we'll just take a look at what we've done here. This first project is a my take on a four-fold card. I kind of adapted it a little bit. There's no tutorial for this one. Um, it was just too complicated piecing all the little bits together. But I've got a little pocket on the front. Uh, this measures five by seven. And then this little front pocket is three by five. And I've cut out, I had a few of these little tags left. Uh, made a little pocket for the front, added a sticker here, and that's the front cover. It's held together with ribbon. Then this flips over. Here's another little pocket with more little tags. And all I did was just use up the little bits and pieces that I had left. So this is just a fun little, um, this would be great for Mother's Day. You could put little gift cards in the pockets. You could put little notes in the pockets. Here's another wee pocket with more of this sweet ephemera, and I've written little messages on the backs of the tags. I'm giving this to a friend who's going through a tough time right now. And then I actually turned this ephemera into a little mini pocket and put the itty bitty tags in there just because, you know, cute. Then I adhered these two pages together to make a large tag pocket. This has a key and the flowers and the big fancy ribbon and then room on the back for me to write a note there. And that lives right in this pocket. Then this flips over and the second section is, I wanna say, I wanna say this is three and a half by six, three and a half by six. And then, this is a little flap page. I just took a scrap, a little scrap piece of a border, made a pocket, put one of the little um, six by six cut aparts in there. And then this flips out and here's a little tuck spot. Used up my few little stickers that were left and added some little tags and goodies back behind the tuck stop spot. Then this page is four by six, or four by seven, I'm sorry, four by seven. And I created another pocket, put in a couple more little tags, added my stickers up here, and this back page is the same. I made a little belly band, added a couple of vintage tags that I had in my stash and tucked them back behind the belly band. And then this is the back page, which is five by seven. And I took a file folder that I found in my stash dressed it up with my little scraps of paper, add a little pocket here where I can tuck in a tea bag or something, and then this lives right here. And there's the back cover. So that's the first one, my take on a four-fold card. And I do have a tutorial on my YouTube channel for this. I believe it's made with Graphic 45 um, Vintage Hollywood. It's a little bit different layout, and maybe at some point I'll do a tutorial for this design because it's a great way to use up scraps. Then the second one I did, I thought, well, let's make a um, Z-fold card. Those are always fun. And I have a whole set of Z-fold card tutorials also on my YouTube channel. So this is a little Melissa Francis resin frame that I hit with a little Stamparia um, Glamour Gel. Added bow and a flower, a little fussy cut thing here. Made this little um, decorated paper clip to hold the Z-fold closed. So. I'm sorry, this is like a joy fold, I think, or a, I don't know, a joy fold, Z fold. I don't know, maybe I just made it up. <laughs> anyway, this flips out. Here's a little page here that I decorated with the little rain boots and a little frame, and then another little pocket with little tags, and then a pocket here in the center with a sentiment panel. Then this sticker I matted on cardstock and then put more of these little tags from the cut apart page and the ephemera and they live inside here. Then this flips over and on the back side I've decorated another little pocket and I had a tag in there but it must have fallen out anyway. And then on this uh, back section I made a little um, tea bag folio 
And then one of my little vintage demi tasse spoons tucks in there and then a honey stick to go with that so this would be a really cute little mother's day gift as well pink and pretty and beautiful bright pink and green spring colors so that's a fun one so then the third one i did a tutorial for and this is an easel card and i made a little box pocket planter on the front isn't that cute and i thought you would like to know how to do that just some stitching. Um, this piece of paper was not long enough, so I split it in the middle, added a panel between it, then put the box pocket to cover up the seam. So I had to get really um, clever using up these bits and bobs of paper. Little birdie flowers, and then these sweet little tags in the little flower box. I wrapped this seam of the two different papers with some twine added a little tag and a sweet little butterfly charm so that is that and of course it closes like this for mailing and it stands up like this for display and down here on the stopper i added a little resin rose some of the little stickers backed with dimensionals and this is an, eph an ephemera piece from the collection that i've added more of these little birdie flowers and this pretty plaid ribbon too and then it opens out like this and in the top, I have a little gift card pocket because um, I'm thinking Mother's Day and that would be cute. And then just one of the little stickers stuck in there. And then um, down here is another pocket. And I made a little tea folio to go in there. Cute, right? So I thought I would share this with you so you can see this. I did not have one single full piece of paper. This was all just little scraps and bits and bobs that I put together and ended up getting three pretty decent projects out of. Stay tuned for the tutorial that will follow. And um, yeah, tutorial's next. Hello friends, Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design. I'm glad you could join me here today for Throwback Thursday. Today I'm working with one of my favorite older collections. This is from 2018. It is Cartabella Spring Market. And I've used and used and used this. All I have left is a little pile of scraps and a few larger pieces, a few stickers, some ephemera. And I thought this is a great project for Throwback Thursday. And I thought we would make a card together. This is such a cheerful collection. And um, it's a great way, this is a great style card to use up scraps. So I started by making a six by six card base from Craft Cardstock, scored it in half across to make an easel card base. And then on the inside, I've already done a little bit of work here, lining these panels with um, five and seven eighth by two and seven eighth inch pieces of my scraps. And then down here, I left the branding strip on to stretch this out and I've matted with pink and green. So I want to add a pocket down here, and I didn't have a piece of this green gingham that was wide enough, so I just made these little gussets on the back. These are about an inch wide, and I make them slightly shorter than the height and the width of my pocket, and fold them in half, and then adhere the folded side to the card. It's just a really quick and easy way to make a pocket, and this allows you to um, fit a little bit more in there because you've got a little more give. The gusset gives it just a little more give. And I don't know if there's a technical term for this um, other than gusset, but that is what I call it. So I'm going to adhere this right here. And you can see I was really close. It was almost too short. And then right here I used an oval die to cut a thumb hole. And I've created a little um, gift card holder to go in here. And I had stuck a little, one of the cute little stickers that says seeds and there's room for a gift card or a tea bag. And that's gonna live right here in the pocket. Now, every easel card needs a stopper or a break to hold that easel up. And I used this ephemera piece from the paper collection and I've got to take one of these off because I put it a little too far over 
but you'll see how this is. I put um, pop dots on the back to raise it up. And I want this to go right here. And this is actually going to be our stopper for the easel. Um, I need to put a couple more little dots on the back. There, that ought to work really well. So there's that. And this, this is behaving badly, but it's because there's no weight on it, so it wants to fly around loosely. For the card front, I started with a five and um, seven eighths panel of this green, and then a five and three eighths of the pink, and then I had this little five inch um, panel here, but it was too short. So what I did was I cut it in half, put half on the bottom, half on the top, then used this pretty floral print to fill in the center and you would never know that it wasn't big enough. And then here is that tab that we die cut and I'm gonna bring in some twine. This is just a really fun, simple way to add a little sweetness to a card. And we're just gonna wrap this around at the top and of course there and I've left a piece on the left that's going to be long enough for me to tie a bow and I pre-wrapped this so I should be able to go five times and then come up here and tie a bow and I'll find a cute charm to add on here I'm just tying a knot and then you can kind of spread these out but it just a, it's just a nice way to tie the place where these are joined together it's just a nice way to tie them in I've got this really sweet little butterfly charm that I'm just going to thread my burlap string through the top. Tie another knot, then tie a bow. and then trim the tails. So super cute. Then I thought, oh, and then the last thing I wanna do is adhere the back of this tab to the back of my panel. So there. Then I thought, I had this little um, border strip piece and I was like, oh, you know what? This would make a really cute little planter if I go 3D. So I'll give you the measurements. And this is just ideas for you to use when you have these little bits and bobs of a collection left over. So this is seven inches by one and three quarters. And I scored two quarter inch lines on the sides and the bottom of this craft paper. And then you're just gonna fold this. This is just a, like a little tiny box pocket. You've seen me do this lots of times. And we're just gonna roll this in and hold that in place give that glue a second to set and this will look like a little planter box which is such a cute idea and if you don't know how to make a box pocket you can go to my youtube channel and i have a playlist called paper crafting 101 and there's one there that is all about pockets and it will show you how to build a box pocket. Once you know the technique, you can build them any size that you want them to be. So then I'm gonna fold this up and just reinforce those creases and lay down a little bit of glue, which my corners are a little short, so this one could be tricky. This craft paper was also a scrap that I had um, 
So what I'm going to try to do is just put my adhesive along my box flaps. And I want this to live just above the flower bench, the potting bench. Make sure I'm square. And oops, see that went to the back. That's why we have to check. I'm going to bring in my bone folder and just get down in there and secure this to the card base. And then do the same thing over here. That actually did pretty good, even though I, I wasn't sure I've never made one so shallow before. But now we've got a little dimension going on. Isn't that cute? And there's the box, so you can see. Get this glue up. All right, so now what goes in the box pocket? Well, I had a few of these little floral tags left over from the collection. I matted them on scraps of pink paper, added these little mini paper clips, some spring green micro ribbon, twined to the tops, and some little tags from the sticker sheet. And these are gonna live right in this little box. So stinking cute, I can't stand it. Um, just like that. And then I also cut out, um, I think this was an ephemera card and I just trimmed around it a little closer, added some pop dots and I wanna add some dimension over here, right here. So that just makes things pop a little bit more. And then I want to add this little tag hanging off the corner of our box. So this is actually two tags from the ephemera pack that I overlapped with a sticker from the sticker sheet, some pearls and some of these little micro roses from Little Birdie Crafts. I'm just gonna tie a quick bow. And actually, I think we'll add this last. I wanna put my flowers in first to make sure that I'm not um, gonna be interfering with where I want them to be. And these little tiny keys my husband gave us for um, our anniversary, I just think they're adorable. And I love them. So here's our flower, our flower packet. This is um, Little Birdies Celebrate Life Kimberly, and I like them because they have a little bit of sparkle. I'm gonna put my foliage down first. So this comes up like this. And then I've got one more. So I want this to be up high because that makes it look more real and kind of just dangling off the end. And then I've got a beautiful, let's see, let's play with this a little bit. The whole idea, what I like to try to do is create a beautiful curve um, that draws the eye around to see everything in, it makes the eye sweep the card. So I think I want this sparkly pink one in the middle. And then this pink one does not have sparkle. So I'm gonna tuck it right here. And that tab is a great landing pad for it. And then right here on the box, but I wanna move it so these little berries on the paper are peeking out because that's another great way to make things look real. And then this little pink one, need another glue stick, sorry. This little pink one has an actual rosebud attached. So this would be really sweet sitting underneath like this. Let me get my foliage tucked in place. There. Look how cute that is. That's adorable. So now you've got these little tags that live in the little box on the front. Um, and we need a ribbon, which I already tied. And I'm just going to lift up. I think I want it to be right underneath this main pink one. So 
so I put a little glue on the knot and I'm just gonna lift this up and I'm gonna take the tip of my scissors and push that into place and just hold it for a second until that glue sets and while I'm holding it I can fuss the bow you come in fluff the loops up you put your fingers in there and fluff them you move the tails around where you want them to be you arrange the loops where you want them to end up and then by the time you've done all of that usually the glue has set up look how cute that is I am really loving this so, so I tied a couple of small really small bows these are about an inch maybe an inch and a half and I want to put these in the corner up here so they look like they're part of this little striped awning And now I can put my micro roses on top of them. Right in the center. Look how cute. What a cheery little card. Now we've got this little tag. And I think what I wanna do, I'm trying to decide where I want this to be. Yeah. So I think I'm just going to glue this right on this side to kind of balance this flower cluster here. So let me bring our card front in. And with an easel card, this is what I do. I go about a quarter of an inch in from the edges. And I lay out a simple rectangle, and then I scribble in the middle. And I close my card, and I line up that card front. And just press this down adorable so now what we need to do is add another bow here and something over here so I'm gonna finish this up but this is the basic idea you get the idea of how to put this together using your scraps little bits and pieces finishing up a collection throwback Thursday I got a little hot glue on that tag but I'll heat it up uh, the way to fix that is heat it with your glue gun gently gently and then uh, wipe it off so I'm going to finish this with another bow so that when it's up for display, it's as cute as it is when it's down. And um, you'll see it in the photo gallery that follows at the end of this post. My name is Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up so that others can find it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you along for the journey. I'm always sharing ideas here and have a lot of fun. Um, so I'm going to go get my craft on. Thanks. Mm -hmm.